Good afternoon, and welcome to We're Going to Hear from the Wizard. And the wizard is none other than Chuck himself. Good afternoon, Chuck. Good afternoon, Lori. We'll see whether the wizard will go. This is going to be the dark wizard or the white wizard. Well, we're open for good luck. We've had a little bit of a uh, delay getting started, so we're going to get right into, um, right into our business. Well, what are we doing today? We're going to be talking about a brand new element that was debuted initially at the users conference called the certificate tracking wizard. And for anybody out there who is doing certificate programs, pay attention. Um, so we're going to talk a bit about what is a certificate tracker. Um, I don't have the list in front of me. I'm going to ask for a show of hands. How many of you in the audience have never heard of the certificate wizard other than maybe if you read your note? in your new goodie sheet. How many people have heard of Certificate Wizard? Raise, raise your hand. It's like the rascally rabbit. Raise your hand. <laughs> raise your hand. Let's see. How many people have played well, with it? it? 25 or 30% of our audience. Somewhere. Okay. All right. Well, for the rest of you, and, and I don't think anybody there has probably used it, so we're going to talk about what it is getting it to make the magic, how do you run it, and then certainly questions. So uh, what is it? It is a tool that basically you add to a report and in transcripts. It is specifically in transcripts. I need to clarify that in the code. Where they have completed the certificate or have taken X number of classes. And again, assuming that you have a certificate that requires taking X number of hours or X number of classes within a certain group of courses. Um, but the certificate wizard, running a count of people taking certain classes is fairly easy. What the certificate wizard also allows you to do is to automatically set things like the uh, level of achievement, and you can do classes that are within a certain number of completion or that are missing core classes. And you can actually do multiple certificates or multiple groups of classes. You can have some people in one group and some people, how many people have taken X number of classes from another group. So um, for the 80% who haven't seen it, let's move on and get to the next step. Setting up the wizard to make magic. How do you do that? Well, it's easy. All you need to do is to get the latest bill the student manager. And again, version 56 or above has the certificate wizard integrated. It is part of the base system. There is no charge. It is not an optional module. It is, as they used to say in the Prego spaghetti sauce commercials, it's in there. All right. So, how do you do certificate programs using the wizard? The first of all, the big, the big, big, big deal is that you use grouping codes. And again, I'm going to roll to the demo. Um, grouping codes in Aceware are what you assign to a class when you are building the class. Now, there are two ways that you can use grouping codes. One, you can use them as, for all of you with Aceweb, that is where you put in the grouping codes that go into the web course list. You can also, though, use you can also use grouping codes to uh, use for the certificate program. And if we look at the codes in the demo, you'll note that we've got a couple of grouping codes specifically designed as certificate program codes. And the distinction is that when you're setting up a code, and we're kind of backtracking a bit, but this is important. When you're making a grouping code, if it is a certificate program code and not necessary, and you want to keep it separate from a category of courses on your ACEWeb, you can put in, don't display these courses on ACEWeb under the category ACEWeb user certificate. So again, there are pros and cons, and it kind of depends on how you market your programs, whether the certificate program group could also be a grouping code category online. And I'm going to go ahead and get you to that real quick. 
And the idea is that in the course schedule, Lori, how am I doing on the screen refresh? Good, very well. Very well, OK. Um, the groups of classes that you show on your, your course schedule, as far as groups, um, is tied to this. And this is what determines whether or not a grouping code you set up is going to be displayed when a student goes to your website and looks at your courses on AceWeb. And again, that's for, for AceWeb users. Now, uh, OK, back to the slideshow, back to the show. So the idea is that for every certificate program where you say there are a group of classes that you have to have taken two or three or four or classes that you need to have taken a certain minimum number of class hours, you know, contact hours, you would make a grouping code for that. All right, that's number one. Number two, of course, assign it to all the courses that are in the certificate program. Now, just a side note, if you said, well, wait a minute, that's great, but we have all these old courses now that I see this that we might want to make as part of a grouping code, not a problem. If you go back and just edit the master course, put in the grouping code for the certificate that is part that you're trying to build, you can run the reports and it'll automatically go back and take all the registrations tied to those courses. So you don't have to go to individual registrations. All right. Um, I'm going to push forward, Lori. You got anything popping question-wise that we need to deal with right now? Everybody's just kind of hey, Everybody's keeping up. You're doing a great When are we going to get to the point? OK, we've got a grouping code on the classes that are part of the certificate program. Then. You make a report, and again, actually, this is this is only transcripts because you have to have grouping codes in the cursor. Transcripts. Uh, I'm going to actually go back and edit this on the spot. I meant to do this in the so that uh, that really is the only place that that is in there. So we want to we want to clarify that just in transcripts, and this is what you add. Just do it certwise. All right, that's easy enough. Save the report, and then you have to rerun it. And running the wizard then is simply a matter of running transcripts. And when you do the query, you have to use the query. Uh, you have to have grouping code as part of the query element. Now, you can have other things. So you could have the course begin date has to be after a certain begin date. So if you only wanted the last three years' worth of classes, you could do that. But the query must include grouping code in order for this whole thing to kind of work. All right, I believe that at this point, we get the wizard. And at this point, we're going to go ahead and get to the Shazam part. <laughs> I love it, which is what we really like. All right. <sighs> I don't think there are any questions, because we really haven't gotten to anybody to get the questions. So let's go in and get going. We've been fiddling with the grouping codes. We're going to leave this. All right. Uh, so we're going to reports, registrations, transcripts. So far, so good. Um, we're going to, I have an additional report. We're going to uh, run a query now for a grouping code. Grouping code equals ACE, ACE. And do we want to, this is part of the typical transcript. Do you want to exclude courses not yet completed? Yes, typically yes. Do you want to report possible uh, duplicate registrations? Now, if you've seen this and you wondered what the heck is this for, in when you're doing grouping codes, because one class can have multiple grouping codes, if you're going to be doing a dual display, that is, I want some grouping codes out of X and some grouping codes out of Y, if you have a class that's actually in both grouping codes, it'll show up twice. And again, it depends on kind of how your model of the certificate program is defined. That is, what do you allow your students to do? you may want to include or remove. And I'm going to include for our demo here. And now I already have a report called Certificate Wizard. And voila, we are finally at the Certificate Wizard report. So um, 
when you get to the report, what this criteria one is supposed to do is to show you all of the different grouping codes of the classes that are inside the query that you brought the courses into this into this report. So again, let me emphasize again, I don't have a slide or I should have done that. You must have um, in the query the range of classes that have the grouping codes that you want to be able to deal with. So like I said, if you wanted a range of dates, um, you, you'd have to add that to the query that says grouping code is. All right, I'm going to just choose the ACEWARE user certificate. Once I choose the, the, the grouping code that I want to analyze, I then have a choice of how I measure it. I want to find people who are less than or greater than or equal, greater than, exactly equal to, less than or equal, or less than a certain number of classes. So if I wanted everybody greater than or three classes, and if I wanted to add a, a grade or a performance indicator, that their grade was either greater than a certain value or that their attendance in the class if you measure hours completed on the, the green registration screen is a certain amount, we could do that. I'm not going to do that for right now. All right. Here are our other options. Um, only return names missing one or more core classes. Lori, question? No, you're fine. OK. Or students have also have taken classes from a second grouping code. Don't know, don't care is a future defined tool that we may add. And also, you'll see there's a TBA down here. Um, OK, so we're just going to run this simply. I want only people who have at least three classes in the certificate program. So when I run that, you'll see some notes on the screen. Um, so many records were found. So many records met the criteria of three or more. And so here we go. Blagojevich, Brown, Bush, Colson, Greenwood, Havlicek, Obama, Palin, Rice, Sandler. I think there's like 12 different students who have taken at least three grouping codes. All right, so that's pass number one. Now I'm going to run another one in a second. But uh, let's, let's take a breather now and see if there are any questions we're going to show some of the other examples in a bit here and um, see if there are any questions bubbling up right now. Uh, one question that's coming up, is the grade using a letter or a numeric value? In my thinking on that, I actually have to look at the code on that because I think that it has to be, and I can't remember right now. It's been a while since I've written that. Uh, I will have to actually check on that. Um, Matthew, I don't know if you've got the code. Can kind of eyeball behind the scene while we're looking at that. And maybe we can get back to that answer in a bit. We'll let Matthew double uh, do some double work here. So, uh, so we're going to check on that. Okay. Um, Is there any place in Student Manager that differentiates between a core class and an elective class? That's where the idea of the grouping codes, I'm going to cancel this, that when you're building, uh, when you're building classes, when you're building classes, what you could do is create a group of classes that are core classes. And maybe you might have ACE core and ACE ELE, ACE where core and ACE where elective. And so basically what you do is use the grouping code. So that if you have a certain core set of classes, you must take all four of these classes. You give them a grouping code, and you know the core classes are falling into that particular group. Then the elective classes, you give them a different grouping code. And then we'd use the dual mode report, which I'll try to show you in a second. Okay. All right. Any other questions right now? Good questions, by the way. Yeah. All right. uh, I have a question for Michelle, and I'm going to ask her to rephrase it because I don't quite understand what she's asking, but I get the feeling that it's significant. So okay. I'm going to a I'll ask her to reset this. All right. All right. Well, let me go ahead and run another example here. And
and see if I can get this to behave. I had an issue with this earlier. All right, we did a report for uh, ACER, and we did a report for ACE. So uh, let's run this again. Grouping code equals ACE, ACE, which actually is going to give us two grouping codes. We have an ACE and we have an ACER. Exclude, yes, include duplicate, certificate wizard. So if we wanted the ACE cert group to have, we want everybody with two or more classes. And this might be, again, the, the example of the core group. Uh, but we also wanted to know students that they have to have taken an additional group of classes from a different grouping code. So if we're going to choose the ACE group, and they had to have taken two classes. So here is that example where this might be the core class group, and this might be the elective class group. And Matthew has reported back that in this particular element, if you're doing grade, this must be stored as a percentage in order to do the math. Because we're not smart enough to figure out what an A or a B or a C is on that. Uh, so again, if you're doing grades uh, on certificate programs, you'll need to do it in a number grade. All right. Thanks, Matthew. All right. So we're going to say two or more classes of the certificate, two or more in ACE. All right. Let's see what happens. Let her up. 68 registrations met the first, 12 met the second, 11 names met both. All right. Now. This is a little bit of a cheater because ACE workhorses and, and ACE were most likely, a lot of them had the same, you know, listed under the ACE work training, and they were also part of the ACE work certificate. So this was kind of a gimme uh, in the process. But that's the idea of how you use the wizard to do a two-step approach. Uh, now, uh, the, I'm going to answer the other question. And I'm going to try doing this. This was not working for me the other day, uh, the minute here. ACERT or MANCERT. And the idea here is that you'd put ACERT certificate or management certificate or whatever other groups that you want to do the analysis on. Exclude, include. And it's not working right. Uh, it's choosing the first one, not the second one. Um, all right, well, I'm going to go to another scenario here now. We're going to choose people who have taken three or more classes. And let's see how many we get. Only three or more classes in the ACE word certificate. So we're going to run this. 46 met the first criteria, 12 different students. And who do we have? Blagojevich, Brown, Bush, Colson, Lee Greenwood. All right. Well, let's suppose that one of the things you can do with the certificate wizard, and I'm going to back step a bit, is that if you've got if you've got courses, if you've got courses that are, uh, Lori, with me? Yes. Okay. If you've got courses that are part of a core group, um, and let's say Ace Web and Stu, let's go. Let's find a different one making your email module pay off. Let's say, here's if part of a certificate group, a cert email module, hang on a second, somebody's trying to. Uh, Joel, um, I got mom on the Goodness phone. Goodness gracious, I we're just I on hold for a moment. <laughs> Don't want you to think we've abandoned you right in the middle of things. about that. I thought that was a student calling with the problem here. So. It was my chainsaw's done. There you go. Uh, back to the story here. So the idea is that this is a core class, and a student has to have this as a core class to complete. The idea is by using the catalog code in the wizard, you can find students who have taken three classes out of the four required to meet, but are missing one of the classes that's coming up this fall, so that you can target a group. This is You can target students who are almost completed with the certificate except for the one class you're holding this fall. So you talk about a group that wants to take the class. That is the group. This is your money group. That's your money pot. All right, let's go run the wizard. 
registrations, transcripts, run the report, grouping code is, and we're going to go back with ACER here, A-C-E-R, all right? Exclude, yes, include the duplicates, we're going to run the wizard, we're going to choose our group. They had to have taken three classes, and they have to be missing one of the core classes. And so remember, there were 12 people that we ran the time before, right, out of this three group. Now we're going to say, we want to put in the catalog codes of all the core classes that we're offering this fall. And we want the wizard to tell us, of these 12 students, we already know there are 12, of these 12 students, which ones of these have not taken a core class that we're going to offer this fall? I'm just going to do one right now, ACE201. Now, I actually did that a minute ago, and I wrote down, uh, it asks if you want to remember a core course list. So if you have a core list of five classes, you can store it like in the drop-down, and it will remember it from time to time. All right, and again, the way that works is that you basically, if you want to put multiple records in the list, you just enter the codes and separate them by spaces. I'm going to leave the one right now, and let's go. 46 registrations met the first, zero students, and then we're going to skip through that. So remember, we had Blagojevich, Brown, Bush, and Greenwood. Blagojevich, Brown, Whoops, Bush and Greenwood are not in the list because they took, they have that, that class already in their transcript. So that the only names that it's giving us are those that are missing that list. And that previous message is wrong. Matthew, we've got to look at that. It said 12, but it really wasn't 12. So let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, Okay, so there are seven people out of the 12 that have not taken uh, one of the core classes that we're going to offer this semester. So there, there was a, you know, that, that display message in the wizard was not right saying there were 12. It's, it's uh, the, my, my counter is wrong. But this would allow you to then send a note to this particular group. And again, you don't have to have the report be a transcript. This report could be a letter that says, Dear Rob, thank you for being in the XYZ certificate program. One of the core classes you need for your program will be held this fall. And you could put a link to it on your ACE web, send that out, and it would go to precisely the people who need that course to complete the certificate. All right. Now I'm going to ask for other questions or if there's any other buzz that this shows up. Um, we can ask or answer the question about the numeric or letter grade now. Right, and I mentioned that earlier. Matthew wrote in that you must have a numeric grade in order for it to do the greater than a certain grade value. All righty. Uh, could you use a UDF true-false field for a core class and write the query that way? No. The answer is no. Uh, the only thing you can use to do the wizard, though as it's written now, is to create a grouping code for it. Now, back to the, if you are using a user-defined true-false on the course to determine if this is a core class in a program, you can use the new the function, and I'm, we're going to show this off. We're going to go to ACE, go to the help guide. We have something that will fix you up just fine under report functions. All right, everybody together. Stamp group. Whoa, 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 whoa. Stamp group functions. The stamp group uh, function allows you to automatically add a grouping code to all of the courses in a report. So if you were to just run a report for all of the courses for your UDF 234 equals true, you could automatically add a grouping code to every course in that group, and then you can use the wizard. 
So where I, my answer is no, you can you can accommodate that, or we can move you to this new uh, enlightenment uh, in a second with this particular report. Okay, okay. The, wizard, the wizard has yet another wizard. So there you go. The magic wand number two. The wizard has an assistant. The <laughs> <laughs> wizard has lots of tools, lots of toys in his trick bag. So. I am grouping together a variety of questions here, and I hope it comes out somewhat so that people understand. The original question was, how do you enter the required number of courses for a certificate? And then I got other how questions about enter? how you would list this uh, the required courses on the website. Would you put everything in the description? What do you do here? Well, the i we're, we're we're rolling back uh, we're rolling back to the beginning here in a bit of a chicken and the egg. If you've got a certificate program, I would assume that you have a description of it somewhere on a website. And I, I'm trying to think. I don't know if somebody, Lindsay, if somebody there has got a browser uh, with a, uh, oh, let me kind of go customers, Ace Web. I'm going to go jump to SMU. And, and, and I'm getting additional comments here. It says, like, if a certificate has two core and four elective classes, how do you make that? Well, uh, that's out. easy to do in ACEWARE. I was thinking, you know, how do you describe it to your clients? Well, the idea is you've got to have, presumably you have a description on a website that says, hey, SMU offers, and I'm guessing that I've got to get back to, uh, the, this is the registration part. We need to get back to the main SMU website. But that you have a link that says, Wow, SMU now offers a webmaster certificate program. And in that certificate program, you'd say, well, there are four core classes, blah, 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 and blah. And then you need to take five hours or 50 classes or 55 classes or four classes or 50 hours of supplemental classes to earn the certificate. And you'd have that described uh, in terms of your SMU CPFP, da, 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 da. I am had to do uh, SMU dot edu dot Let me get to that. Edu cpfp cpfp. All right. Let's see if I've got that spelling here right. But the idea is that you have that described in the piece, and then you'd basically link from that particular. You'd link from that particular uh, page to a group of classes in your in your ACE web, and you could you know you could identify uh, a link of the classes because you'd have to you do this once a semester. Whenever you offer a next group of classes, you could put a link on this page to all the classes uh, that are that are involved in this group. And I'm thinking here. Now, in this case, this has an application program. There's an application program course description. Let's go down and see how. Now, again, I don't know uh, if Lindsay here, but fundamentals of financial planning, now this would involve a certain amount of, um, oh, yeah, Matthew is telling me I'm an idiot. Uh, thanks, Matthew. I'll try that again in the nicest way possible. From the course description, you could actually build a link from this into the website of your ACE web where that course is listed for this fall. Uh, now, in this case, where they have an application program, they may want them to get them inside the box first. Um, but now, in terms of defining those classes in Student Manager, you basically would, when you're at a class, you would create a grouping code, as I said earlier. You'd have one grouping code for courses that are part of the required set. You'd have one grouping code that is part of the courses for the elective set. And then you could do the dual mode to, to run that. I'm going to, Matthew tells me that I'm not spelling right. So let's try this again. I'm going to go back and try to do a, another report. Grouping code in a list. So I'm going to put. I'm going to go ahead and use a cheat sheet, a cert, and then I'm going to use 
concert, and then I'm going to use mansert. All right, let's let those rip. Exclude, yes. Include, dupes, the wizard. Ah, it helps if you type in the right flipping codes. Matthew, thank you. I was misspelling the code list. And so the idea here is that we've got, OK, I want people, with, I'm, I'm going to hold the questions, Lori, and let me run this example. This is what I was trying to do a minute ago. I want people who have two courses, let's say the ACERT is the core. They needed at least two. And they also must have, out of the management certificate program, two classes. So now let's see what happens. And now if you'll watch the upper right-hand corner of your screen, kind of right up in this area. Ooh, where's my highlighter here? Right up in this area, we're going to see some messaging appear for you here. So all right, let's let her rip. 68 registrations met the first. Two names met the second. One name, one name met both requirements. So short, good old W. He has two management courses, industrial management, and apparently advanced training as a management. Oh, things your supervisor taught you are the two management courses, and he took three ASOR courses. So out of the 68 students in the total group, only one student met the requirements for the uh, both of those elements. All right. Uh, well, Matthew, that uh, I was I was freaking out a minute ago. So Matthew, thanks for bringing, uh, winding me down. All right. Back to the questions. Uh, Laura, you seem to have some good ones coming in now, and we've got plenty of time. So guys, shoot those questions forward. Um. I've been having an ongoing thing with, with someone here, with Deborah, actually. Um, and, and she just has all sorts of questions. They're all the, basically the same, and yet they're all different. Other than just knowing how many courses are in a particular certificate, is there a way to put that somewhere so that other people know? Uh. Uh, other people meaning students, or other people meaning staff. And, and again, I, I, part of the, if you if you have certificate issues, uh, feel free to call in. And, and again, uh, yeah, we've Deborah been, is telling me staff. By the way, she's saying this for is staff. Yeah. Um, in, in to, well, I'll, I'll tell you what. This is this is core to the basic use of ACEWARE. You want to know how many courses are part of a particular certificate group. You can always go to the grouping or to the code editor, course grouping codes, and there's the ACEWARE certificate. Look at the button. Show me the courses. Do you want to group the courses by name? No, we want to show every session of the class. That will show you every stinking class listed by the course number that are part of the certificate program. So that's one way to quickly get a view. Uh, there is another way that I'm thinking function key that you can do that. What is the function key? This is, uh, I'm going to send, um, what can we send? I'm going to send a laser pen to the person that answers this. Who can tell me what function key would also give me a way to do this? Then see if I can do it. Ah, grouping code, I can't do that. I lied. I don't think there is a function key. So never mind. Um, <laughs> Nobody's going to get a laser. No, yeah, what I was looking at is whether or not the F2 key might give us that. But I don't have, actually, we could add, Matthew, let's add grouping code to this. Show me all the courses coming up that would have a certain grouping code. I'm thinking that. I'm thinking that we could make this do that. Anyway, the, 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 the easiest way certainly is through using the code set. You know, go to the code set and do show courses. All right, other question or, or variations of the theme there. Michelle would like to know, is there a way for students to see their progress in a certificate program? You know, that's a good question, and the answer is no. Other than what you, I mean, they can't go in online on the web right now and do that. Uh, that's actually one of kind of a wish list item that we have 
in my and, and Stein doesn't know this yet, or I've warned him about it, but we'll tell him again. But the idea would be that to have the ability for a student to go online, and what you'd be doing is going to um, going to your account. Uh, let's see. I'll show you what I'm, I'm thinking. So if I go to my account, my history, part of the idea here would be if I was if there was a certificate program that you'd have the ability to say group by uh, grouping code. So they could look at all the classes in uh, grouping code uh, Mansert or Acert, and they could see what they have taken. And presumably, they would know that they needed four courses out of ACERT, and they have one, two, three. Uh, actually, Cheryl is working up a new uh, view mode for all of the tables in ACEWeb. And that allows you to sort by any column in a table column, which I think is going to be cool. And basically, just adding that to the course history would actually let you do that right now. Um, we need to add grouping code to this particular list. There are some more sophisticated ideas behind this that, again, we've been talking about. But that's one of the one of the certainly simple ways to do it would be going to uh, the course history and adding a column for the grouping code. Uh, other questions? Okay, uh, I'm, I'm going to quote here. I can pull a transcript of all the courses in a particular certificate program but I don't want to have to read each transcript to see if someone has all their electives and their core classes. Is there a report that we can set up that the program will do that for me? Uh, where have you been in the last, uh, this is a slam, but where have you been in the last 40 minutes? That's the wizard. I, I'm sorry, but that's, that's what we're talking about with the wizard, so that you can run, let's go back, re, 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 lather, rinse, repeat. The idea of the wizard is, okay, you know you want people with a certain number of classes. So you use the wizard. You select the grouping code list. You want um, Mansert. And you want the soup CRT. I'm going to run a couple of different ones. I don't know if we're going to get the right amount of hits, exclude, include. But basically, you say, I want of the first criteria should be your, your 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 required group. I want everybody who has taken one class of the management certificate program, and you know one class. And you could have that could be two, that could be twenty. The electives could be two, or it could be twenty. You, it's whatever you've defined as your requirements for the student. <clears throat> Twenty-one met the first. 16 met the second, 14 names met both. That's what it does for you. Rather than running everybody in this certificate program and everybody in this and looking at page one, OK, yes, yes, no, yes, no, you have the wizard do that. The wizard does the counting and the accumulation for you. And again, that is the whole point of the, of the deal here. You bet. And, and here's a case where. Industrial management was counted under both programs. It's under supervision. It's under management. And so if you say include both copies of the course, um, it's going to show up twice in the list. And so there's some tuning we need to do to kind of work with people as to how they're setting up certificates. There's some that TBA element on the certificate wizard is what we're talking about. So again, that's uh, what about that? routine we just did doesn't accomplish that for you. I, I believe and, and so maybe what they're looking for, and, and somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. And we may not be understanding the dilemma of trying to do text, uh, under, you know, texting uh, complicated deals. Yeah, I think what they're looking for is a way to hand a student a report that says, this is what you've taken, this is what you still need, and you can choose from X. Okay, and and again, this this is a bit of the dilemma of of um, the bit of the dilemma of running reports out of Aceware is that there is not any place on here where you can set up 
a curriculum requirements like you would a senior check in a in a credit system like you know the the million multi-million dollar programs like banner or data tell for credit courses you could say I need 16 hours of social sciences 12 hours of math 16 hours of of uh, fine arts etc cetera, etc cetera, and then it'll compare your courses against that there is no graduation requirement set in aceware the way you can do it is to put in a you could have a a common you could have a link on your website and I'm gonna roll back if we can you could have a link on your website that says graduation requirements or completion requirements and you could then put a link in the email uh, it, Lindsay has said there is a has class option. Actually, I hadn't thought about that, the has class. Um, in the report, if you've got a certain required number of classes, I don't think I have has class in the report. Um, there is another function in the help guide. Let me make a new one. That's some online help. And student manager topics, report functions. One of the functions in Aceware is has class, which returns a true or a false if a student has taken a class. So what you could do is you could list the class name and indicate if this class is part of the group X. Now my dilemma with has class is I'm not sure that we can reference a grouping code uh, with has class. And uh, has course returns a number of courses. Da, 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 da. We'll have to do some experimentation on that. Um, if you know if you know the class, if, if the courses have a course code that you know like ACE 102 is one of the classes in the required set then you could say, have they ever taken a class that contains the digits ACE 102, and it'll say yes or no. You say completed or need to take, and that could be on a report. And again, I realize we don't have to, I'm not taking the time to show you what that is, but yeah, the has class function would, would allow you to do that. And again, I'd be happy to, uh, I'd be happy to, um, I could I could send a sample report on that and Lindsay if you got one maybe you might send it along I know Lindsay's done quite a bit of stuff at SMU with uh, certificates all right we got another 10 12 minutes here actually we'll go 15 since we started late Lori how are we doing on questions I think we're about done I'll accept just a couple that I am sending on specifically to you I'm just telling them that they need to get in touch yeah, with yeah some of the details stuff issue. yeah well yeah. Um, Let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and take this has class piece because I think that actually gives me. Um, let's go into a transcript report. Uh, this we'll just see how this is a stump the chump kind of thing. Um, and, and I'm just going to use default report grouping code is we're going to say all courses. Let me just add one for. We're going to just do every course after a certain course begin date. Course begin date is after a date, and we'll ask later. I just want to get a whole bunch of records. Okay, course number, course code. Where to go? Where to go? Courses starting after a date, 01, 01, 10. All right, we're going to get a whole bunch of courses. Yes, exclude, and we've got a bunch. Okay. Now a transcript shows everything that's in the in their record. All right, we know that. What we're going to do is put in the group footer, and we can do this kind of wherever you want to put it. We're going to put in a couple of questions. We're going to say credit card in Aceware, and then we're going to put in another one called uh, management in the Millennium. All right. And then we you could 
you could basically list all the courses that are part of the certificate. Maybe this is going to be required core. And then you'd have another group elective. And we're going to say this one is uh, mastering student manager. All right, so we could do whatever you're going to do. So the, the function has class allows us now to say um, has class, and then we put in the quote, um, quote, ACE 201 dollar sign, dollar sign, RGCRSE, quote. And print. Okay, now if I've got my skin right on that, I need to make my quotes in the right sequence. And this is where actually if you got double quoting rather than using um, single double because that gets confusing, use a left bracket or right bracket. Okay, so the condition is going to be does the letters ACE show up in any class that they've got in their system here? Um, and actually, okay, and now we're going to look at, um, let me see if that was the function, if I've spelled that right, has class, and there it is, R RGID, oh, we need to pass it the RGID, okay, see, that's a nice thing about the help guide, so we're going to put inside here, RGID, comma, Okay, now I'm going to copy that and paste it to the other one. Management in the Millennium, I believe, is MGT500. MGT500. And then copy, paste it. And Manager, Aceware is Ace010. CE010. All right, and let's see what happens here. RGID. Okay, let's try NMID. While I'm working away here, Lori, any other questions bubbling up? Well, people are wondering, what in the world is he doing? <laughs> this is kind of like watching the other thing you say about the laws and sausage and maybe magic is, do you want to watch? Have they taken Processing credit card, processing Aceware, Ace, oh, it's 102, not 201. Uh, let's try that again. It's 102. All right, now the question is, is whether, yeah, so there it is. So, Teresa Alexander has taken processing credit cards. It says that. Let's go next. Student manager, mastering student manager, yes. Have they taken these others? No. Uh, manager, mastering student manager, uh, that one is showing as a yes, and it may be that um, that was a course. See, we're only looking at classes in the last two years. Actually, the function without passing another parameter looks at the lifetime history. So by rights, we should probably have put in a additional con a condition to a, uh, the logical would be um, true or false. Oh, we need to put in here RG, that, that the course contains a course number, and then you need to add like the registration date of the course is greater than a certain date if you only wanted courses you know, taken within the last X number of months, days, or weeks. But that's an example of how you could say, here's what you've taken, here are the things you're missing. You, know, you, need, to, you need to take these following courses. And again, you could actually link to the website. Uh, it, would, it would involve some additional coding on your email. But you could put in a link to the website for this current semester's iteration of that particular class. All right. Well, we are now getting close to the hour. We're a little. We're still ahead of schedule. We've got some time. Uh, other questions, Lori? That seems to be answering quite a few of them. Although Lindsay wants to know if you could use the has class in the deadbeat area. 
Sure. Yeah, it has class. I think all you need is the ID number of the person, and it checks the history till forever and ever and ever. I'm in. So, yeah, you, any place where you can get a student ID number, you could use it in the pay area. All it needs is the student ID, and then you pass the parameter in the function of what it is you want to check for. I want to, before we... Before we get a whole lot further and people start going away, we do have another uh, webinar scheduled. Next uh, two, three weeks, September 29th, and this is, by the way, 10.30 in the morning. Uh, let, me, let me put that on there. I meant to, meant to do that. 10.30 a.m. Uh, we've got, again, lots of new things going on and want to make sure that we kind of update you about the cool stuff that we added over the summer. So that, that webinar is coming up uh, this summer, uh, or in, in a couple of three weeks, I guess so. Um, other questions? Folks, thank you much for staying with us. And uh, Matthew, thanks for correcting my spelling on that. Um, any other questions or final comments? Again, as always, if you've got suggestions, if you want to kick this over, um, call in, uh, visit with your tech, or visit with me. If your tech can't help you, get me involved. Some of this stuff, it, it, it's all in the design of your program. Uh, I'm not saying that the certificate programs that you're running now are not well designed. But if you want Aceware to manage them, the big issue is turning them into something that you can track using the idea of adding a code to a course. I mean, that is, let's save this puppy, close, save it, and we're going to say status report, close, get out. Let me get to a course. So let me just get back to this. It's your grouping code, dears. It is the grouping codes that you create that will be used in that certificate wizard to help you generate those uh, those reports. So, Lori, final chance for folks to pipe up or I we good? Think they're good. All righty. Well, again, I will look forward to hearing from you. Hopefully, again, um, this is going to give you some help. And if you need to, as we said, with the true false business, move things around to put them into the grouping code model. Uh, there are tools to help you, wizards to help you do that as well. So um, I don't have the magic wand here that, that uh, we could, you know, provide everybody with a, uh, uh, you know, uh, this 70, we're having like 80 degree weather in Kansas, and it's the nicest weather we've had all year. If we could share our weather with you, we would. But um, in the meantime, um, give us a call, give us a shout. We look forward to running into you this fall, maybe at some conferences. And uh, we'll see you in about three weeks. Lori, thanks again. Great, great slides. Matthew, thanks. Lindsay, thanks for your comments. Have a good day, everybody. Bye-bye.